and I should sit on my desk. That's how a professional I am. Hey, what up, guys? Welcome back, or welcome if you're new. If you're new here, my name is Jorge Cortez, and this is a DIY talk show. The show where I show you how to make stuff and try to make you laugh, even though I usually try really hard about it and fail at the process. Anyway, back in 2014, I know it sounds like a long time ago, I posted this video that received some positive, but also some confusion from you guys. And so in this video, we'll try to explain everything that that video received. It also led to a request that was requested over and over and over again, because I mentioned it in that video, so... I need to do it, which is this video. I'm talking about the three panel digipack, even though those kind of DIYs are a pain in the ass to me. Nonetheless, here we go. Before starting, I just wanted to talk about this comment that I received by Lit Music Deep Zero that claimed that these digipacks are not actually called digipacks, but they are called CD jackets. So I decided to make my research on Google because I'm a Google nerd. Maybe. I don't I don't know. So here it says that it's a type of packaging for CDs or DVDs typically made from cardboard with an internal plastic holder for one or more disc. So it basically says typically, not that it's all of the time. But the commenter is right since I googled CD jacket and what I thought was a DJ pack was actually a CD jacket. But when I purchased this Lady Gaga's CD jacket, it said on the tag DJ pack. So what the fuck? Anyway, I'll just call this tutorial CD Jacket slash DJ Pack and call it a day. This is a very long and very somewhat complicated project, so I'm going to try my best to explain everything best as possible. Before starting with the designing and the measurements and everything, I just want to let you know that the measurements are in centimeters rather than on uh, inches and whatnot. So, we first have the front cover, which will be, as the name suggests, the front cover of your DJ Pack. Then, we have the track list section which will be where you are going to put the names of the songs or the videos or whatever that you will have on your digi pack. Finally, for the bottom part, we have the artwork. Here you can actually add whatever you want since it's going to be the first thing you see when you open the digi pack. Now, you see that each square has a number like this. These are the measurements for each section, which conveniently is the same size for each of them. I provided the measurements just in case you want to design each section in other program instead of Photoshop. These are the spines. I've also provided measurements to them for the same reason I already mentioned. One thing that I will want to clarify is that first, the right spine is larger than the left spine. This is due because the right spine folds over all of the digipack while the left one only folds over one section of the digipack. And second, the left side should be rotated to the left, duh, and the right to, you guessed it, the right. This is how CD spines are actually designed. Now we have this little section that I like to call them tabs. The file that I provided you has already blacked out the parts that do not include any design and that will be cut out at the end. I've also provided the measurements of the tab just in case you want to include designs or at least color to them, just like I plan doing on mine. Okay, now let's flip this thing, shall we? On the other side, or the upside down if you will, <laughs> okay let's move on. On this side we have three sections, of which all of them are labeled as artwork. Here you can place anything you want, since it is what you will see on the inside. I will only add pictures and on each of the sections, on the left and on the right, I will label them by CDs and the middle will be for the booklet. I've also provided measurements to them for the same reason I've already mentioned. Anyway, in my other DigiPack tutorial, I got asked why the files from the inside were smaller than the files from the outside. This is simply so you can insert your fingers and take out the disc from the DigiPack once it's made. So this is how my design turned out. Yeah, okay, I know that Camila left the group and I cry every day about it. But I wanted to make this for a while now, so let me be. Thank you. And again, I won't show you how to design your own DJ pack cover, back covers, track list, etc. Because there's plenty tutorials on YouTube on how to design covers for fan made CDs, and I really don't want to take credit for that. And I am not an expert on Photoshop and whatsoever, so I would really recommend you to look for a few tutorials here on YouTube and try to find one that you like the most. I actually designed my digit pack in the same file that I leave you in the description instead of designing it separately, and I just simply rotated 
edit the file on Photoshop whenever I needed to work on another area. If you design your artwork separately on another file, what I recommend you to do is download the file that I provided in the description and then assemble the rest of the designs onto one file and then save your whole design as a big picture and make sure to save it with really good quality so when you print it, it will print really nicely. I also received some concern from people that don't have Photoshop or do not know how to work with Photoshop. So I'll provide some solutions. I know that there is a Photoshop wannabe program called GIMP and I also used to work in Photoscape which is free. It's not like Photoshop but you can actually do designs there but you need to know how to use it. But it's also free. You can download the PNG version that I'll leave in the description as well and import it to pickmonkey.com and work there. But since pickmonkey.com it's free and it's somewhat easy to use and is very similar to Photoshop only online. Or you can pay me to make you one. I'm just kidding. Let, let's move on. Now comes what I come to think as the hardest part of this tutorial, which is importing the file and arranging it on your Microsoft Word to print it because it is a little bit hard. I received some question why I use Microsoft Word instead of other programs like Photoshop, which is the one I have. And that's simply because most people have Microsoft Word rather than other fancy programs. So let's work on it now. Start off by opening Word. Duh. Then click on the tab label Page Design. In there, there's a button that says Size. Click that and then select Legal Mode. I also received some concerns from people that told me that the Word didn't come with the option to put legal size paper. So fear not because I also provide you solutions for this. Next, we will go into the tab labeled as Insert and we will insert our design or you can just drag it if you want. Then we will have a tiny teeny design on the page but we are going to fix this. Right click the image and then click on this tab that's labeled size and position. Then you will get this window. First we need to uncheck the two squares. Next resize the height 29.19 centimeters and then the width 49.11 centimeters. We will get a super big picture. To fix this, we will cut each picture onto a separate piece like I am showing you here. And then copy and paste the cut image and use the cutting tool to cut the other section and so on. And this is how mine turned out. And then they will be ready to print with the right size. However, if you want to print this on letter size paper, do the following. I don't know what was that. Just cut each picture of the design individually. Obviously do not cut the tabs and place them each in a different sheet. However, I was able to fit two of the inner design in the same sheet and the other with one of my CD designs, which I just sized it as 12.1 centimeters by 12.1 centimeters. Once we finish assembled, let's start with the physical shit and whatnot. So I won't be telling you the materials right now because it would make this video so long. So instead what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave you the list in the description in case you want to check what materials I've been using for this project. So once you printed your design or you got back from the printer center. Hey guys, so right now I'm walking to the uh, printer center to print some things for my new DIY. Got him. We're going to focus first on the outer pieces. I'll be doing all the cutting with my cutting mat and my craft knife, but if you're really good with the scissors, you can actually just use your scissors. I'm going to start with the front cover first. I want to remind you something. Since we printed the design on several different papers, we're going to need something to stick the final design together. And since we're not using contact paper in this tutorial, we need something else. So what we are going to do is we're going to create little tabs at the top of each of the outer pieces to stick the inner and the outer pieces together. So we're going to create tabs at the top of every design with a tab of two centimeters on the top and as long as your picture without taking into account the tabs that comes with the design. So just cut the tab part and then cut the rest of the design as close to the edge as possible. For the middle section that is this one with the track listing, it's going to be a little bit different. Yes, we will be adding the two centimeters at the top, but this time we will also leave two centimeters from each side like this not including any of this area since they're going to be cut afterwards anyway. And for the inside artwork, we will only add the two centimeters at the top. However, I was so dumb while rewatching the Beauty and the Beast for the hundredth time this month and this happened. And I didn't seem to realize until later. Uh, 
Anyway, no problem. This is totally fixable. All we need to do is to glue a two centimeter strip of paper on where I was supposed to leave it on it in the first place. <sighs> For the picture that will go inside, just cut them out like normal with no border whatsoever. Then I realized that my camera did not record the rest of the process to gluing the pictures together and then put them on the cardstock and then cutting it out. So basically the rest of the project. But I'm going to try my best to explain it with pictures. So fingers crossed. Let's go. So let's start out by pretending these three pieces are not here. And these two also. Okay, so far so good. So we only have the middle section with the upper 2 centimeter piece of paper and also the size of it. So we are going to put glue here and here and then we will place the cover first on the right tab of the middle section and then repeat with the artwork on the left tab of the middle section. So now we have a large piece with the other pictures, artwork, track listing, etc. And we also have the upper borders on the rest of the pictures like this. Now, we need to glue the rest of the images on the rest of the tabs according to your design. So put glue here and glue your first pictures and so on. So at this point, you should have a big piece that we're going to glue to the cardstock that we are going to use. In my case, I'm just going to use a black cardstock because I'm not racist. <laughs> What was that? For this step, I totally would recommend you to use spray-on adhesive, but I also received some concerns if you could use other adhesive, and you totally can. So to prove this, I use a glue stick instead of spray adhesive. But there's some downfalls to using a glue stick that I'm going to mention further, but if you really can get your hands on some spray adhesive, I would totally advise you to get some. So just glue the whole piece onto cardstock. So at this point, before you start cutting out from the cardstock, is where we would cover the whole thing with contact paper. However, I also received some concerns whether it's necessary to use contact paper or not. So for this project, I decided not to use the contact paper. The contact paper only works as a protector for your design. So if you just want to do a digi pack to have laying around or for collecting, um, that you're not going to use that much, you can actually just not protect it. But if it's going to be a digipack that's going to be handled a lot, or maybe putting in the car, in the table, and whatsoever, I would really recommend you to cover your digipack with contact paper. And I will also list a few downfalls and upfalls. Is that a word? I don't know. To using contact paper. So once it's glued and protected, if you decided to protect it, it's time to cut it out. So once it's cut, we should mark the folds with a bone folder or the back of the scissors and a ruler. Again, my camera was being a d and it didn't record this part. And again, I'm going to try to explain it with pictures. Sorry if you don't like pictures, but this is the best I could do. So again, let's pretend that this is already cut out from the cardstock. Basically, what we are going to do is mark the folds like I showed you on the prequel of this video. But this time, there are more folds. Like here, 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 and here. Whew. That's a lot of here's. And once the folds are marked, you are going to fold them inwards. And then we move on to gluing the tabs in place. So just add glue to the tabs and then just close the design. And this is what's going to create your digipack. If you cover your design with contact paper, you should use a strong glue like E6000 or Gorilla Glue to hold everything together nicely. And that's pretty much it. I am not going to show you how to glue the CD label onto the CD with different method because I actually showed you how to make that in the prequel of this video. So instead, I'm just going to leave you the video in the description so you can watch that if you haven't already. So now I just want to talk about the cons and pros of not using contact paper and spray adhesive. For the lack of spray adhesive, it's more likely that you're going to get bumps and creases on your final project. The glue stick dries quickly and sticky. The pages might not stick as well and as smoothly as the spray adhesive. The pros of using glue stick, it's cheap, it's easy to find, and you might already have it. If also using glue stick instead of spray adhesive, the pages might stick up like this. There might be a fade of color over time, and it won't be water resistant. Pros of not using contact paper, it's going to make the project more affordable. This digi pack only cost me $2 to make instead of $3 like the other time. It will be easy to assemble without the risk of ripping your paint because once you put the contact paper and if you want to lift it, you won't be able and you might even get pumps. So that's a pro. So all of this depends on you. So for me, I really like to use a spray adhesive because it's easier to use and even though it's 
a little bit pricey. It certainly lasts a long time. So this is how my digipack turned out. I am really thinking of just redoing it again, covering with contact paper because as I said, the tabs on the on the top just stick out because the lack of contact paper. But I do like it. I do really like how it turned out. I feel like it looks kind of professional even though it's lacking of contact paper. So if you're wondering why this middle tab, if there's no CD in here, this is to put a booklet. I did want it to include how to make a booklet in this video. It, I just feel like it would be really long to make a booklet tutorial. So if you really want me to make a booklet tutorial, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and you can enable notifications to know when I'm going to upload that video because I would really like to make a tutorial about that because personally booklets are my favorite thing about CDs. So before finishing this video, I have a last surprise for you guys. I am doing a giveaway and the winner is going to receive a three panel digi pack personalized. All you have to do is read the description of this video to read the detailed rules, be subscribed to my channel and comment down below what artists you would like your digi pack if you win. I will announce the winners over my Snapchat and my Instagram, so make sure to follow me there so you won't miss when the winners are announced. The winners will be announced one month from today. And that's it for this video guys. I am so sorry to keep you waiting for this video for so long. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't already, and if you are, I love you. comment down below what artist you want your DJ pack to be if you win, or if you have any ideas for a future video. Follow me on most social media that will be listed down below. If you make any idea why, don't forget to tag it with the hashtag Jorge Unbroken so I can browse them and see them and like them and everything. And that's it for this video guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. This video was so long to make, but I finished. But I finished. Now to edit it. Now to edit it. Goodbye. Goodbye. I'm crazy. I had coffee. I know I actually don't like coffee. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. Oh, it, it didn't break. Thank God. Play work from home. I'm like in a mood today.